And as we continue to track the latest developments of Hurricane Ian, we are also tracking how local first responders are helping people stay safe. Amy Steigerwald joins us live from Toledo Fire Headquarters downtown. So Amy, great to know that they have people here who are down there right now helping. Yeah, that's right, Tim. Their assistant fire chief is already down in Alabama helping uh, those prepare for Hurricane Ian, and they have a number of different firefighters throughout their department that routinely help with these types of missions. I spoke with them about what that's like. When you go, nobody goes to these things because they want to be there. They want to they have a desire to help. Answering the call looks a little different for some Toledo firefighters this time of year. Members of Ohio Task Force One have been on the ground helping for days, preparing for Hurricane Ian. Toledo firefighters Jamie Morlock and Jake Hoffman are still in Toledo, but have helped with past hurricane relief efforts. Much of the work they do is assisting local first responders with whatever they need. If they need us to do what we call walk-in knocks, which is basically uh, structural damage assessments and making contact with homeowners uh, through neighborhoods, we'll do that. And some days you walk 12 miles uh, doing that. Initial missions may be involved in a hurricane water rescues. Um, during flooding areas and stuff with boats and things of that or um, vehicles capable of driving through high water. Right now, only one Toledo firefighter is deployed in Alabama waiting for Hurricane Ian to make landfall. Uh, right now, they're just waiting for assignment basically and waiting to uh, narrow down the path of the storm. Uh, it's kind of like working at the firehouse where you're just sitting around waiting for a call to come in. You do some training, you, you stay up on, uh, on what's going on. And as I mentioned, Assistant Fire Chief John Kaminsky is the one down there right now. We did get a chance to briefly speak with him yesterday. You can hear from him coming up at 530 this morning. Now, we want to toss things back over to meteorologist Ryan Weekman, who is tracking this storm. Ryan, do we know the timing of when this will make landfall? Uh, Amy, it all depends on exactly when it means that right turn, but I think it's going to be sometime later today. It's just so close to landfall already. The eye of this storm has strengthened overnight. The distance from shore is is now only somewhere in the neighborhood of about 60 miles. If you've ever visited down here in southwest Florida, this is very close to Fort Myers and the wind speeds inside of this storm again have only strengthened overnight. So right here's Fort Myers. Uh, here's Sanibel. Uh, if you ever have been to Captiva uh, up towards Port Charlotte, these are places that are going to get it looks like potentially the absolute worst of this storm. Places also like Venice up towards Sarasota. They're going to be on the north side of this eye as it comes ashore. Now, how are we getting this information? It's not just radar and satellites. Check this out. This is live Hurricane Hunter data. They have a plane in the eye of the storm. This is the path of the last two hours. They just made a pass through the eye wall there, and this is a storm that does continue to strengthen. So uh, Tiffany and Tim, it's not often we see a storm like this getting worse and worse as it's making landfall. Yeah, and it's not just where it's going to make landfall. It's that storm surge that is creating problems, will create problems all over the coast. Well, you remember, obviously, as you get closer and closer towards landfall, we can refine the forecast down to exactly where it's going to go. Much of this week has been spent talking about Tampa and the storm surge there. Good news is it looks like they'll miss the worst of it, but since this shifted down the coast, places like Fort Myers now, all of that water is going to go past Captiva. They're looking at a 5 to 12 foot storm surge that's going to go in there. So it's 5 to 12 feet of water going inland. And that's why these yeah. evacuations are so important, not only for the people living there, but for rescuers and first responders. We heard a great, great quote from one of them down there earlier, Tim, on one of the packages we were listening to. They said, you can hide from the wind. You can't run from the water. You got to run from the water. Run from the water. That's exactly. Sure. Yeah, get out of the way.